I'm only 10, but I like to know what's really going on. And when I get ill, I want to know how to get better, but people often use long, complicated words. Mummy, what's my grainiest neuralgia? And often, I don't understand long, complicated words. And sometimes, I don't think they do either. Mum, what's a negative financial uplift? So I want to find out what's really going on. I'm Healthwatch Harriet. Can you explain healthcare to a 10 year old? Who are you and what do you do? Hi Harriet, so um, my, my name is um, Dr Ahmed Myatt. I'm a GP working in, in Whitsum, just, just down the road. My name is Abdul Razak. I'm the Director of Public Health and Protection at Suffolk County Council. My name is Penny Newman and I have an odd job uh, in that I used to be a GP and then I've got an innovation job which is um, uh, giving clinicians the skills and tools they need to help people look after themselves and that's called an NHS Innovation Accelerator Fellow and I've been working on what's called health coaching. My name's Caroline Such. Okay, and what does self-care mean to you? Uh, self-care means making sure that I'm aware of anything that's wrong with my body or my mind, um, being aware of that and taking the right steps to get better. So self-care is uh, ways of supporting people to stop getting ill, to look after themselves when they uh, are ill, uh, and to stop it getting worse and help them living with their illness, in fact, thriving with their illness. So it's, it's for patients to feel empowered in looking after their own conditions. So it's things that they can do themselves um, and that we can support them with at home rather than them coming into hospital or to their GP. If patients are able to understand what they're, what they're dealing with, they're able to manage that a lot better. Self-care is making sure you're well and you've got people around you, but there are lots of people in society today that don't have that strength or that knowledge to be able to help themselves. So primary carers, kind of the GPs, that kind of thing, they need to be able to give all of that information to their patients and make sure the patients are in a place that they can take that on board and, and, and put it into practice. Is it an excuse for you to do less work and for patients to do more? Everyone has a responsibility for protecting their own health and well-being, um, but uh, it, it's, it's a partnership between patients, uh, residents, communities, uh, your carer, and your general practitioner and their team, that, that works around them as well. For instance, if someone's got a blood pressure problem, um, if you tell them why you're treating it, what the targets to aim for, that they can measure it themselves with the same machines that we use in practice, they can actually get much better control while they're at home rather than having one reading a year or twice a year with us. It's not an excuse for the NHS or me as a GP to do less work. It's actually helping people to look after themselves more. If I am sick, will I still get help from my GP or will I have to look after me, myself? No, so you're not on your own at all. But, but actually, by having self-care, you know, when they get ill, they can seek medical attention very quickly rather than necessarily do things on their own. So actually, sometimes the self-care is enabling them to get treatment quicker. Well, obviously, if you're sick, uh, you need to see a doctor or a nurse or a physio or someone to help you. But self-care isn't about just managing people who are sick, it's helping people thrive. So for example, someone with maybe painful joints, they can still have a great life and enjoy themselves even though they've got pain. And it's about how to manage that at home themselves so that they feel confident and then they know what to do and they don't need to go to the doctor if they don't need to. My GP in Colchester, she's, she's wonderful. She She's taught, you know, spoken to me about how I can keep myself well and I know that I can turn to her if I need to. Um, but most of it has been self-taught um, over the years um, and ex using experiences and having to use different services. It's something that I've had to learn myself. What happens if people are already too ill to join in with self-care? 
So that's the more challenging part, but I think everybody, no matter what stage they are in life, can actually do a, an, an element of self-care. Well, you're never too well to actually self-care because uh, you, this, is a, this is you working with your carer, um, your family, you, the community and your wider social network, but also your healthcare professional, which could be your GP, it could be a district nurse, and it's really, you know, any, every little bet that you do for yourself, together with all those other people, uh, makes a difference to your overall health and well-being, both your physical health and also your mental health as well. I've known that, you know, going to the gym will help me feel better. Um, going for a walk will help me feel better. Picking up the phone to my mum or going to see my mum or talking to my partner or friends take, and taking myself out of a, a situation that doesn't make me feel comfortable. So if I have sort of an event or something to go to or I'm supposed to be going out with friends and I suddenly start feeling quite anxious about it, I've learned that the best thing to do is not, not put myself in that situation in the first place. How will you know if it's helping? From my own personal perspective, things have worked really well. I've also seen more projects now where self-care has, has worked as well, where if we help people with back pain, they've actually managed to look after themselves without the need to see a GP and going via a pharmacist, um, reducing the time needed spent with me and allowing them to self-care condition, which is the number one minor illness condition. I mean, what I know most about is health coaching. So we've trained 4,000 clinicians to have different sort of more enabling conversations with patients um, and about 50 local trainers. And we know it's working because we've done three evaluations and people that the clinicians are coaching, they say, that was a great consultation. Thank you. I feel so much more confident to look after myself. Um, we also know from all the evidence and research from other studies. So we, we know around health coaching, there's a lot of evidence now, growing evidence that it really improves health outcomes. People like it um, and it saves money. Well, we will know because patients will actually feel healthier and they will report that back to us. Uh, there'll be less need uh, for uh, unnecessary medication and there'll be less admissions uh, to, to hospital and people actually get the right care at the right time at the right place. Self-care means that you can look after yourself at home without having to go to a GP every time you feel ill. By promoting self-care is letting more people be free and not waiting around in the emergency room or the GP, waiting for someone to treat them when it's not actually needed. I think it makes things better for patients because they can learn to be more independent as everyone would like to be. I mean, no one really wants someone to do everything for them, even a lazy teenager.